Hello guys, this is Code and Code, and this is a video editorial for this problem: minimum number of flips to make A or B equals to C. This problem is taken from Lead Code, and it from uh, it is from the category Bit Manipulation. So the problem, as the name suggests, uh, just a second. Yep. So you are given three integers A, B, and C, and you have to uh find minimum number of operation or minimum number of bits you have to flip to make a or b equals to c so if you see in this example a is this one and b is this one in c the zeroth bit is one so either a or b the zeroth bit of either a or b must be one so that their or operation can be one right so we have to change either one or uh, either the zeroth bit of a or zeroth bit of b uh, we can also change both but we want minimum number of flips so we would ch change uh, one of them so in this example we have changed the zeroth bit of a now the second bit uh, the first bit of c is zero so this first bit of a and b must be zero both of the bits but since both of the bits are one so we have to make both of the bit zero so there would be two operations one here and two here in total three now the second bit is 1 so one of the second bit of either a or b must be 1 so we can see there is so we need no operation here and the uh, third bit of c is 0 so third bit of a and b must be both 0 and as we can see there is a, both uh, the third bits of a and b are zero so we need no operations so in total there, there would be three minimum operation and hence the answer is three so this is the problem that we would be taking uh, now so let's let's first increase the size so you can see just a second okay 120 percent is okay so result is equals to zero the minimum number of uh, flips that we need to make now of uh, since the input is integer which is 32 bit integer so there are 0 to 31 bits so we would check for each bit let's bool x false y false and z false now bool x y and z are the uh, would represent the ith bit of a b and c so x would represent the ith bit oh sorry i is equals to zero so x would represent the ith bit of a whether ith bit of a is set or not if ith bit of a is set then x would be true otherwise x would be false same goes for b and c so if ith bit if uh, ith bit of a is non-zero then x is equals to true i have explained how this works in the uh, bit manipulation course series so just if you have no idea how to test whether the ith bit is set or not just go and watch those lecture so we have to do the same for b and c so just replace this with b and this with y this with c and this with z so what is happening here we are taking uh, x would represent true or false depending upon whether the ith bit of a is set or not y would represent uh, true or false depending upon the ith bit in b is set or not and same is for c so there are two conditions first if c is true that means the uh, let's take first consider the case when c is false so c is equals to false in uh, means that ith bit in c is zero like this so if ith bit in c is zero that means the ith bit of a and b both should be zero so if uh, x is true which means the ith bit of a is set and uh, y is true which means the ith bit of 
B is also set. Now since uh, the ith bit of C we want to be 0, so x and y both must be 0. But in this case, since x and y both are true, which means we have to convert both of them to be 0. That is why the result would increment by 2. Else, if x is equal to true or y is equal to true, which means either one of them is true, uh, one of them is true, not both of them, which means uh, only either x or y is 1. So, what it means that either the ith bit of a is 1 or b is 1. Since we want both of the bits to be 0, here uh, it, this condition indicates one of the bits is 1. So, we have to make that bit 0. So, the result would increment by 1. Either both of them are 0, either one of them is 0. And the last condition would be when none of the x or y is sorry either both of them are one either one of them are one and the third condition would be when none of x or y is one so in that condition we would add zero so we are leaving that condition as it is so we have handled when x c is false that is the ith bit of c uh, why am i comparing c we have to compare in x y and z sorry z is equal to false, in, uh, false indicates the i bit of c is 0. Uh, now we have handled that case, the i bit of c is 0. Now we are going to handle the case where i bit of c is 1. In that case, if the i bit in c is 1, then 1 of either a or b, the i bit of a or b, one of them have to be 1, right? If both of them is 0 then we would increment the count by 1 because if both of them are 0 then we would make one of them to be 1 right so the count would increment by 1 that is the only case we have to increment otherwise we would leave as it is so if x is false and y is false if neither x nor y is false uh, neither x nor y is true which means both of them are 0 so we would change one of them to be 1 so in that case the result would increment by 1 and this would be our final answer so we would return result let's see so finally we will uh, let's run this and test now the test is running as we can see the sample test cases are passing at least so let's submit this and see whether we get an AC. So we get an AC. And this was all for this problem. Uh, this was all for this problem. I think this was easier than the previous problem that we have solved. So this was based on greedy approach. So thank you guys for watching. And until the next video drops, keep coding. Thank you.